What's going on guys? Teaspoon Miner here with a quick teaspoon of cryptocurrency for you. So what we're going to do tonight, real quick, is I'm going to show you guys how um, when you're dealing with a HiveOS drive that you've worked with, whether it's a solid state drive or a USB thumb drive, if you are wanting to kind of reset everything and start from scratch and you know flash the hive os uh, image again or change images to it like a beta um, and you're dealing with all the partitions that you know balana etcher or uh, rufus or whatever your flashing program is uh, all those partitions that got created on the drive when you are trying to get those wiped out to start fresh sometimes it can be a little bit finicky and so what I'm going to do tonight is show you a quick and easy way to blow away all the partitions on an existing USB and wipe it fresh to make a clean slate for a new flash of HiveOS. So let's get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up a command prompt, which you can do with just CMD. And you're going to type disk part. Hit enter, it's gonna ask you for your UAC prompt. You're gonna hit yes. And there's a couple different steps here, and um, some of it we wanna be careful, but what you'll do is you're gonna do list disk, hit enter. This is gonna show you all the disks that are available in your PC, and what you're gonna to do to select the disk that you want is once you know you'll see on the left column where it says disk with the disk number disk zero is my storage drive eight terabytes disk one is my nvme c drive so 465 gigs that's a 500 gig um, and so if i wanted to for example i'm going to be very careful with this because i don't have my thumb drive plugged in currently but um, i'll just show you guys so if i wanted to deal with disk one you're going to do cell for select sel or you can just type select select disk one and then hit enter now it says disk one is now the selected disk the next thing is you want to see what the partitions are so you're going to type list part or partitions it's you can do abbreviations so partitions or part and then hit enter and here you go this shows you the partitions that are on my 500 gig NVMe SSD. So give me just a second. Let's plug in a thumb drive and we will take a look at the partitions. Yep, so I'm sure you're familiar with this. All of these pop ups, all of these, your drive is not accessible, things like that. It's because of the formats of the partitions that get created. And so if I was to open this up in the disk manager, yeah, so here you go. So there's like four different partitions that got created with this HiveOS thumb drive. And if I was to just try and clear these out with this, you can only, I can delete this one. But I can't delete that one, and then I can't, like, anyways, it's a little bit finicky. Yeah, so I can only delete, like, some of these. Anyways, so it's it can be a little bit weird when you're working with it through disk management. So what we're going to do now is, so let's go back over here to disk part. We're going to do list disk. There you go, there's that third disk, and you'll see, because we had selected disk 1 previously, it has the asterisk next to it on the left. So now I want to change to disk 2. So I'm going to go cell for select, disk 2. Disk 2 is now the selected disk, list disk, just to make sure. There we go, asterisk next to disk 2. And I'm going to do list part for list partitions. There's the partitions that are left because I was able to clear those couple of them from disk management. And now, and once again, um, you want to be a thousand percent sure when you do this next step 
that you have selected the correct disk in step two when you're doing your select disk because this next step blows away all the partitions on the drive and basically wipes it out completely. Um, I don't know what would happen if it was, say, selected on my system drive, but I don't want to find out, and I don't suggest you find out, so just be careful with this next step. So once you've selected the disk that you want and made sure that it's the correct one, what you're going to do is type the word clean and then hit enter, and there you go. So this shows me that it succeeded in cleaning the disk, which means that it cleared out all the partitions on that drive. So if I go list disk, now you see disk two is selected because it has the asterisk. It says online, size 28 gigs, free 28 gigs. So when you get the drive to this point, um, confirm there's no partitions currently, what you'll actually do is there is actually create commands that you can use in disk part as well. Um, you can create partitions, you can create volumes, um, etc. So if I was to do create partition, it shows me you can create a primary, you can create an extended, you can create logical drives, etc. So what I'm going to do, because I've got the drive cleaned and there's no partitions on it currently, what I want to do is create part for a partition. Again, it takes abbreviations and it works with it. Um, so I'm going to do part and then primary. Disk part succeeded in creating the specified partition. Now if I do list part, there's the primary partition. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to leave disk part open, but I want to just check this PC to see if this will recognize. Okay, good. So this does recognize capacity. If you don't create a partition and then you go over to this PC to try and do a format, this will say unknown capacity and the quick format will actually fail. Um, so you want to have at least one partition created. Um, you can do formatting from within disk part if you want to, um, but it takes a while because I think it's like a low level format. So I will typically just bring the drive to this point where I select the disk, identify that it's the correct disk that I'm looking for, clean the disk of all partitions, create a primary partition, and then I will exit out of disk part, which brings me back to the command prompt, exit out of that, go into this PC, see my drive, and I'm going to go format, there's the capacity, and this, the file system doesn't really matter because I think the file system changes when Belina Etcher does its etch of the HiveOS image, so this doesn't really matter, but I'll do this just to have it be a clean slate to go into when you start the Hive etch process. So we'll do NTFS, quick format start and confirm we'll do okay and there we are drive is cleared and ready to go and now we'll go over to Blaina etcher flash from file do Hive OS beta. I found earlier today actually that you don't necessarily have to actually unzip the XZ zipped beta because Belina Etcher can actually use it. It reaches through. You see how here it shows up as the IMG because um, it sees that that's what's in the compressed file and so it knows to extract that and write that. You'll see here it says 7.55 gigabytes even though the actual download is only about a gig. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty smart software. So now we're going to go select target. There's SanDisk Cruiser Spark USB. 
we want to be careful obviously if you do the show hidden because this shows system drives and other big drives and things like that so we're going to choose our sandisk cruiser spark let's just double check yep drive e there we go and we'll select and hit flash and this starts the process. And obviously it creates those petitions first. So you'll get a couple of these prompts. You can just hit cancel on that. And that's starting the process. And once this is done, you can pull the USB and then plug it back in. And then that can give you the Hive partition where you can drop your rig.config file and plug it into your rig and then boot from it and be off and hashing again. All right, and then when this finishes, it will unmount and remount and show you at least one of the partitions. It does do this validation. You can skip it if you want. Sometimes I'll let it run just to make sure that everything gets, you know, that everything got written properly in the etch. Um, but that's up to you. I've done this before and it's always been successful, so I'm just gonna skip it for now. Flash complete. And if you want, you can do flash another. I think this speeds up the process for subsequent ones after you've finished one but I could be wrong, I've never actually skipped, or I've never actually flashed a subsequent one right after finishing flashing a first one. So you can try it if you want. All right, so like I said, once it finishes, you close out of the software, pull the drive, plug it back in, and yep, you get these pop-ups like normal, totally normal. Close out of these, and there is the base hive drive partition. So this is the one that has the rig config that you can work with to get your farm hash, your rig password, worker names, rig ID, etc. in there. Honestly, I actually don't typically download my rig config file from the farm, from the workers, and put it on the drive, because as long as I know the worker ID and the rig password during the first run, which is just the first boot of a rig with a freshly flashed HiveOS USB, um, you enter the rig ID and the rig password during first run, and then it, it communicates with Hive servers to pull the configuration, and it creates a brand new rig config file for you and puts it in the right spot on the drive. So it kind of does everything for you, and I just assume not manually enter stuff. Um, I know you can download the rig config file from HiveOS. So anyways, it, there's options. It's not totally required. Some people are religious about it, that's not something I do, but it's not really a big deal. So we've got the drive done. So we will eject it. And here it is. And you can now take this over to boot your rig for the first time. Thanks you guys for watching. If you found this useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Be sure to tune in to Tuesdays with Teaspoon every Tuesday evening uh, between 9, uh, 9 p.m. or 9.30 Eastern Time. Um, I stream every week, uh, whether it's unboxing stuff from Newegg or talking about GPUs or tuning my rigs or whatever, or just shooting the breeze. I like to chat with you guys, so feel free to tune in. Uh, my previous streams are on my channel, and appreciate your support. In the meantime, stay safe and mine on.